Hello, I am Bookface. I study weird stuff all the time, but studying aliens is in a league of weirdness all its own. In my experience, you're constantly taking the line between complex scientific theory and paranoid conspiracy and playing jump rope with it. The scientific route is obviously more credible, but also a lot drier. That being said, looking towards the goofiness makes my brain deflate like the world's saddest balloon. Not to mention, whether it's scientific or conspiratorial, there is rarely much to go on, except for today, where things get so bafflingly in-depth that I knew I had to make a whole video on just this. So buckle up and get ready for the roller coaster that is the Janet Russell alien sighting. So first off, there's a little background necessary before we get into the weirder details, because yes, what I'm about to tell you is not one of the weirder details. Uh, first off, as a sort of disclaimer, I guess, while I try to get multiple sources on anything I end up talking about, I'm pretty sure this story only really has one reference, because it's from the witness straight to the author, so it's probably not anywhere else. So uh, yeah, shout out to Brad and Sherry Hansen Steger for the book Real Aliens, Space Beings and Creatures from Other Worlds. I really like the variety and organization the book has. Now, the witness in question is a woman named Janet Russell. Personally, I hadn't ever heard of this name before. But apparently she's a psychic who's been on TV multiple times. Another little side note is that's all I'm gonna say on that. <laughs> I only bring it up because it's relevant to the sighting. So without a way, let's jump right back to March 27th, 1962. Our witness was 22 years old and pregnant, going to a doctor's appointment. She was on Route 112 when she sighted a spaceship, which she described as resembling a sparkling, color-changing moon. So she got out of her car to look at the craft, and then all of a sudden... She had just arrived at her doctor's appointment, but apparently she looked horrifically sunburned. Then she heard the doctor commenting on her being an hour late, except she didn't hear him say it. No, she heard him think it. With her brand new psychic powers! And so there we have the- Wait. Wait, what? Nothing happened! Unless. So now we fast forward ourselves 33 years from the sighting. At 55, our witness visited an astrologer about the incident who determined by her star signs, no, I'm not getting into astrology either, that her encounter had been extraterrestrial in origin. This led our witness to gain a passion for studying aliens, which to me is the most relatable part of this story. After continuing her research for some time, she went to a doctor, Jean Mundy, to undergo regression, which I think is similar if not the same as hypnosis, with the intention of unlocking hidden memories. And here's where it really gets going. I think I just unintentionally wrote the longest intro ever and tried to hide it. So she got out of her car to look at the craft, and then all of a sudden she was lifted to a spaceship resembling a white light pulled by some blue light. You gotta rave up in here. She was brought into a small white room where she encountered her first alien. Yes, first. This alien resembled a mantis, and as such I dubbed them the Jantis. You see what I did there? Creativity galore. They had some kind of pointer with a light at the end and told her to stand in front of this weird silver metal screen. The Jantis touched her head and led it down to her belly button, and when they touched her stomach it hurt, which is a little concerning considering she was pregnant at the time, and getting zero time for us to process that bit of information, we are immediately introduced to another alien species. This time there were two aliens, with white or light gray skin and black eyes, vaguely resembling snowmen. Under the skin of their chest their hearts were visibly beating. I dubbed the Frosty T. They immediately reassured our witness telepathically that they meant her no harm. Because yeah, casual reassurance definitely negates the whole telltale heart crap going on right in front of me. After they show up and tell her to chill, <laughs> right away we get introduced to another alien. This alien was described as resembling one of... one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A friend of mine pointed out that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles didn't exist at the time the sighting took place. But remember, the recounting of this story was 33 years later. If you're a more optimistic person, you could just say that it looked like that and that's what she compared it to with her later experience. And if you're less optimistic, you could say that it fused with a memory of her seeing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and that's what it became. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a hypnotist, I'm just tired. This creature, which I dubbed the Kawabungalian, reminded her of a theater usher, which she admitted herself sounds kinda weird. The Kawabungalian directed her to a number of different rooms on the ship with the frosty tees staying alongside her. Me and the boys. <laughs> she went to a dark room and was told not to enter. She did, however, take a little peek. Such a rebel. And inside this dark room, she saw an entire universe with a bunch of stars and everything. Next, she encountered a gold room, but was told it wasn't time for her to enter there yet, which 
Sounds really ominous to me. Next, she ended up in a pale pink room which resembled a nursery, complete with 20 incubator-like devices. As she went down the line of incubators, she found an embryo-filled petri dish in all of them, each more developed than the last. And when she got to the end of the line, she encountered another alien. This alien resembled a human girl with eyes described as sparkly and magnetic. This one of them there anime girls I've been hearing about. Oof, that was painful. She was small, thin, and pale with a large head. This little child, I dub Uchu-chan, smiled warmly at our witness who immediately wanted to bring her back home with her. You weeb. She was not allowed to do this, obviously, but she was reassured when the alien said, Don't, Don't worry, you'll see her again soon. soon. Which also sounds pretty ominous if you ask me. I feel like somebody wanted to spice up Charon's fairy ride and they just decided to make it kind of sci-fi. After this, she was taken into another room. This one, however, was pale blue. Instead of another little, mostly human alien child, it was a young cowabung alien. Ah yes, the two genders, anime and turtle. She was then taken to a room reminding her of a courtroom with a yellow light and a misty aura, where we encounter our next thing, which I will simply call the council. So the council was made up of two very human-like beings and one that resembled a hybrid of what? I am not sure. It's a hybrid of something. After noticing the council, she noticed yet another alien being. This alien resembled a tall human with beautiful eyes and long light brown hair and was wearing a brown cloak. This ethereal being, which I shall call Chad, seemed gentle and closely resembled a human, though if you looked at him from certain angles, he looked like a hologram. He pressed a wire into our witness's arm, leaving a scoop-shaped mark. She was then informed that she had been tested and passed. She then heard a lot of talking, sort of sounding like some very fast English or just animalistic grunting. I guess the council has decided your fate. <laughs> so yeah, this whole thing took place over roughly an hour and ended with her getting to the doctor and also gaining psychic powers. I think it's notable that the aliens all seem to communicate with some sort of telepathy, so maybe they just kind of opened that door and forgot to close it like some irresponsible teen in a crappy horror movie. And thus ends the saga of Janet Russell's alien encounter. This was a wild story, with some details resembling common alien things like the insectoid or human-alien hybrids, and then some more unique features. <laughs> if you like this story or just interested in aliens, then check out my website where I put all my research and drawings and also this book in particular. Very good read. Highly recommend. I don't deserve money for this, but if you for some reason disagree, I have a Patreon. And of course, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!